Hi guys, in the next series of videos we're going to take a look at an introduction to hydrocarbons, homologous theories, naming organic compounds, looking at the number of carbons and an example, functional groups, organic formulae, looking at general formulae, structural formulae, skeletal formulae, display formulae, molecular formulae and empirical formulae, an exam style question and finally a summary. So let's begin by having a look at an introduction to hydrocarbons. You may have come across hydrocarbons before, and just like their name suggests, hydrocarbons are compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen. We can classify our hydrocarbons into different groups. The first group is our aliphatic hydrocarbons. These are hydrocarbons with carbon atoms joined together in either straight or branched chains. An example we've got here is hexane. If we have a look at hexane, we can derive its formula. Hexane has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, as its name might suggest, the hex suggesting six. So that's C6. And if we're to count the hydrogens, we would see that there's 14 hydrogens. So that's C6, H14. Moving to our alicyclic hydrocarbons. These are hydrocarbons with carbon atoms joined together in a ring structure. Here we have an example which is cyclohexane, and you can see that ring structure. Here we have the skeletal formula of cyclohexane, something we'll take a look at in a later video. But let's go ahead and try and derive the formula for cyclohexane. Well, each of the corners of our skeletal formula represents a carbon. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, so that's C6. Each of these carbons will be covalently bonded to two other hydrogens. So that'll be C6, H12. The final type of hydrocarbon that we're going to look at are our aromatic hydrocarbons. These are hydrocarbons with at least one benzene ring in the structure. The example we're looking at is the most basic. It is simply benzene. Benzene is a chemical you may have come across before. It's a really interesting chemical with a really interesting structure. Benzene has a formula of C6H6 and is represented like this, with this ring representing the delocalised electrons that exist in its structure. So now we've had a look at an introduction to hydrocarbons and the different types of hydrocarbons we're going to take a look at. Let's have a look at the term homologous series. So what is a homologous series? Well, members of a homologous series are similar. They have the same functional group and they differ from successive members by a unit of CH2. They have similar chemical and physical properties and these properties show a gradation. So if we take a look at some examples of some homologous series, you may well have come across these before. The first example we're going to take a look at is alkanes. Now the alkanes have a general formula of CnH2n plus 2 and they're saturated hydrocarbons. If we take a look at our alkanes and we take a look at the formula, methane is our first alkane. Now we know that the general formula is CnH2n plus 2 where n represents the number of carbon atoms. So with methane we have one carbon atom so that's C, and then we will have 2 times N, that's 1, plus 2, that's 4 carbon atoms, so that's CH4. Ethane is the second member of this homologous series with 2 carbon atoms, so that's C2. So we'll have 2 times 2 plus 2 hydrogen atoms to give us 6 hydrogen atoms. Propane has 3 carbon atoms, and following this trend, we'll have eight hydrogen atoms, butane, four carbon atoms, and 10 hydrogen atoms, and pentane, five carbon atoms, and 12 hydrogen atoms. And you can see how each successive member differs from the previous member by a unit of CH2. So now we've taken a look at our alkanes, let's take a look at some other examples of homologous series. We have our alkenes. Our alkenes have a general formula of CnH2n, and these are our unsaturated hydrocarbons. Although they appear to be similar to alkanes, there are important differences that we'll look at later in this unit. We have our alcohols. Our alcohols have a general formula of CnH2n plus 1 OH, and it's this OH group that's important as the functional group of our alcohols. Now, as we said with our homologous series, 
They share similar chemical and physical properties, and we see a gradation in the boiling temperatures of our alcohols. If we take a look, we have methanol, our first alcohol with only one carbon atom, ethanol with two carbon atoms, propanol with three, butanol four, and pentanol five, as the names would suggest. If we take a look at the boiling points, the boiling point of methanol is 65 degrees Celsius, of ethanol is 79, Propanol is 97, butanol 117, and pentanol 138. And you can see that gradation, that increase in the boiling temperature of the alcohol as the carbon chain length increases. So now I've taken a look at homologous series, looking at some examples of these. Let's take a closer look at naming organic chemicals. Organic chemicals and organic chemistry is the chemistry surrounding the derivatives of carbon, so it'll include compounds such as hydrocarbons. Now, there are millions of chemicals that fall under this organic chemical umbrella. Some have very similar structures, so we use the UPAC nomenclature to name our molecules and make it easier to identify them. We can really break down the name of the chemicals into different parts so we can understand what the name is referring to and the structures that we're looking at. The prefix is the first part of the name. It indicates other functional groups apart from the main and most important functional group. The stem of the name is the main part of the name and we'll take a look at how we name the longest carbon chain later in this video. The suffix is the last part of the name. It indicates the most important functional group. The other components of the name can include things like multiplying prefixes. These indicate the presence of one or more groups. And the locant are numbers and hyphens that are used to show positions of atoms and groups in the molecule. It's locating where specific functional groups may be. So let's take a look at how we name the number of carbons in our compounds. When we have one carbon, the prefix we use is methyl. When we have two, it's ethyl. When we have three, it's propyl. And when we have four, it's butyl. Continuing on, we can see that five is pentyl, six is hexyl, seven heptyl, eight octyl, nine nonyl, and then decyl. The code for the number of carbons isn't difficult for you to learn, but it's incredibly important that you do know it. We need to be able to decode the name of our compounds or give unknown compounds a name. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's have a look at an example compound and look at how we can name it. So here we have a molecule. I've given you the name. The name is 1,2-dichloropentanthriol. We're going to break apart this name to see each individual component and relate that to the structure. So firstly, let's go ahead and number the carbons in the structure. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, indicating the stem is going to be pent. And we can see the stem here is indeed pent, indicating the five carbon chain. So let's start at the beginning of our molecule and work through. The one, two over here is our locant. Our locant is indicating to us that our dichloro group, our prefix, are on the first and second carbon. The di is our multiplying prefix. That is indicating that we have two, that's di, chlorines. The chloro part of the name is our prefix. This is indicating to us that there's a functional group of chlorine. So from the first bit of our name, the 1,2-dichloro, we can tell that there are two chlorine atoms on the first and second carbon of our compound. We know that the pent indicates there's five carbons, and this last bit here, our suffix, is telling us that the main functional group is a alcohol functional group, indicated by the OL. Our hydroxyl group is on the third carbon. So looking at our compound over here, we can indeed see we have two chlorines on the first and second carbon, we have a hydroxyl group on the third carbon, and the longest carbon chain is five carbons long. So we can see how we can break down the names of our organic compounds to gain information about their structure. Now, we could have started with a name and drawn out the structure, or we could have done the reverse, started with a structure and broken it down to find the name. You need to be able to do both these things, and we'll have a look at an example of that in a later video. We briefly mentioned functional groups, and in today's video we're going to have a look in greater detail at the different functional groups and how we can use them in the naming of our organic chemicals. 
So firstly, let's have a look at what is a functional group. A functional group is a group of atoms that are responsible for the characteristic reactions of a compound. So how do we use our functional groups? Well, the functional groups, as I mentioned, can be used within the name of our compounds. As our functional groups can be contained in different parts of the molecule, they can be contained in different parts of the name. They can be contained in the suffix, that's the last part of the name, if they are the most important group. However, if they're an additional functional group, so not the most important one, then they're contained in the prefix, the first part of the name, before the stem. So let's take a look at different functional groups and how their name and code changes if they're used in the suffix or prefix. The first functional group we're going to look at will be the alcohol functional group. The alcohol functional group is this OH, this hydroxyl group. Now, if it's not the most important functional group, it'll be named in the prefix, and the prefix is hydroxy. So here we have a benzene group with a hydroxyl group on it. Now, the benzene group is the most important functional group in this molecule. So the name of this compound is hydroxybenzene, and we can see that this hydroxy bit here is our prefix. Looking at when the alcohol functional group is the most important functional group, here we have a molecule with our hydroxyl group over here. In this situation, the hydroxyl group is the most important functional group. The molecule we have has one, two, three carbons, so the stem will be prop. So the name of this molecule is propanol. So let's go ahead and have a look at a different functional group. This is our aldehyde functional group, and you can see the aldehyde functional group here. We have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and the carbon is also covalently bonded to an atom of hydrogen. We usually see our aldehyde named in the suffix. The suffix we use is AL. Here we have a molecule with one, two atoms of carbon. So the stem is going to be ETH. We have that aldehyde functional group over here. So the name of this compound will be ethanol. So let's take a look at alkanes and how they can be considered a functional group. Well, alkanes can be considered a functional group but they're usually thought of as a key feature of organic molecules with a single carbon to carbon bond. The suffix used is ain. So the example here we have is propane. You can see that we have those single carbon to carbon bonds. And as we have three carbons, the stem is prop. And as it's an alkane, the suffix is ain. Parts of more complicated molecules, which resemble our alkanes, are known as alkyl groups. Here we have, here we have two different alkyl groups. With one carbon, we have a methyl group. And with two carbons, we have an ethyl group. Alkyl groups have one fewer hydrogen atoms than our alkanes, giving them the general formula of CnH2n plus 1. And the letter R usually, but not always, represents an alkyl group in our more complex molecules, such as this one shown below. Here, this R group will represent an alkyl group. We briefly discussed alkanes before and mentioned that alkanes contain only single carbon to carbon bonds. We name the alkanes in the suffix, and the suffix is ane. Here you can see our compound has one, two, three carbons. So the stem will be prop. And as it's an alkane, the name of this compound is propane. Looking at our alkenes, we again briefly discussed alkenes and we mentioned that they contain double carbon to carbon bonds. They are unsaturated. We name our alkenes in the suffix. The suffix is ene. Here we have an alkene. Now our alkene contains one, two, three carbons. So we know the stem is going to be prop. As it's an alkene, the suffix will be ene, and the name of this compound is propene. Looking at our carboxylic acids, they are another important chemical, and we can see the carboxylic acid functional group here. We have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and it's covalently bonded to a hydroxyl group, an oxygen and a hydrogen. We name our carboxylic acids in the suffix, that's the last part of the name, and the suffix is oic acid. So if we have a look at this compound here, we can see this compound has one, two, three carbons. So the stem is going to be prop. We can see we have that carboxylic acid functional group here. So putting that together, the name of this compound is propanoic acid.
Now if we have a look at our halo alkanes. Now depending on the halogen that we have, we represent this slightly differently. And we use the elemental symbol to depict each of the halogens. For fluorine we use an F, for chlorine Cl, bromine Br and iodine I, just like their elemental symbols. The halo alkanes are usually represented in the prefix, where fluorine is fluoro, chlorine chloro, bromine bromo and iodine iodo. Looking at this compound here, we can see we have a skeletal formula. Looking at our skeletal formula, we can see we have one, two, three carbons. So the stem is going to be prop. We can see we have a halogen bonded onto the end here, specifically fluorine. And as we have no double carbon to carbon bonds, we have an alkane. So the suffix will be ane. So the name of this compound is fluoropropane. Let's take a look at the last functional group we're going to look at today. That's the ketone functional group. Here we have the ketone functional group. We can see we have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and to two other carbon atoms. We represent the ketones in the suffix, the final part of the name. So here we have a molecule. Let's go ahead and have a look at how many carbon atoms we have. We have one, two, three, four. Now, as we have four carbon atoms, we know the stem is going to be bute. And we can see that we have that ketone functional group over here. We have our carbon that are bonded to an oxygen and to two other carbon atoms. So with the ending own and the stem bute, the name of this compound is butanone. So now we've had a brief overview of different functional groups, what they look like and how we represent them within the names of our organic compounds. Let's just quickly summarise what we've looked at. We've met our alcohol, we met this hydroxyl functional group, and we know when it's included in the prefix, we use the term hydroxy, and in the suffix, we use ol. We've met our aldehydes, looking at the aldehyde functional group, and in the suffix, we represent an aldehyde with al. Our alkanes, we know, have single carbon to carbon bonds, and in the suffix, we use ane. For our alkenes, which have double carbon to carbon bonds and are therefore unsaturated, we use ene. For our carboxylic acids, where this is our carboxylic acid functional group, we use oic acid in the suffix, the last part of the name. For our haloalkanes, depending on the halogen included, we use a different representation, where for fluorine we use fluoro, chlorine chloro, bromine bromo and iodine iodo, all in the prefix of the compound. And for our ketone, where this is our ketone functional group, we use an own in the suffix. For the following molecules, state the type of functional group found in the molecule and the name of the molecule. So let's begin by looking at part I. Well, first of all, let's identify the functional group. We can see we have our OH functional group here, and we know that's our alcohol functional group. Now to name the molecule that we have. Let's count the longest carbon chain. We have one, two, three, four carbons. That's telling us the stem is going to be bute. And now if we have a look, we can see that our alcohol functional group is attached to our first carbon. So we have butan one ol. And for the functional group and name, we receive one mark each. Moving on to part two. Here we have a different functional group. Over here, you can see we have of our aldehyde with the carbonyl group. So now if we count the longest carbon chain, we have one, two, three carbons, telling us that the stem is going to be prop. We can see our aldehyde group is on our first carbon, so we have propanal. So again, we get one mark for our correct functional group and one for the name of this time our aldehyde. Moving on to part three. Now if we look at our functional group, we have a slightly different functional group. We have this double carbon to carbon bond here. And we know that is a functional group of our alkenes. If we now count our longest carbon chain, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons, telling us the stem is going to be pent. We can see that the double carbon to carbon bond is between our first and second carbon. So we have pent one ene. And again, we've got both the marks for that question. Questions like these that require you to identify functional groups and name molecules can go either way. You might be asked to identify a specific molecule given to you, or you might be asked to draw a molecule given its name. 
Just as we've done in this question, it's really important to break down what you're doing. Look for the functional groups or identify what functional groups you need to use first, then count the carbon chain to see what the stem is. Breaking a question like this down can make it much more manageable. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.